Welcome to this lecture on prostate development or prostate embryology. In this video you will learn essentially how the prostate develops and what structures in the adult form essentially make up the prostate. So let's start on this image here. So this is the developing embryo in the fourth, fifth week. So we can see it's a, a sagittal cut looking in from the side. Here's the head. Now we're going to focus here on this green tube. So this is essentially the, di the digestive tract forming. And you can see it, the kind of the mid gut going out to the connecting stalk and the remaining going down to this area here, which we kind of call the cloaca. Now in, in front of that, ventrally to that, we have this other green structure forming and this is going to be the urinary system, particularly the bladder going out to the uracus and then going out to the connecting stalk. So it's this kind of region here which we call the urogenital sinus which will be separated with the septum that's really important for today. However, when we kind of go behind it, so behind kind of the tube a bit, we can see this is where the urogenital um, system is starting to develop. We've already had kind of the kidneys starting to segment, so that kind of black blob there is the kidney proper, with uh, formation with the uteric bud going to this blue line here. So this blue line here is called the mesonephritic duct, and in front of that, that kind of blue, that greater blue, region is the, the body, the mesonephritic body. Now, forming in front of that is the gonad. So this is, the, at this point, the undifferentiated gonad. And these are some important structures that you need to know for how we then develop the um, genital system, but specifically for today, the prostate. So here we've got the, the gonad in red. So it's two, two gonads. So at this point in time, it's undifferentiated gonad. So it appears that the, the, the point of differentiation comes from the Y chromosome. So there's factors that are coming out of the Y chromosome that seems to differentiate the, the, the gonad into a, in this case, a testy. So when the testy is becoming more dominant, there's going to be two main effects coming from the developing testes, those coming from the Sertoli cells and those that come in from the Leydig cells, which are going to impact the way that this ductal system changes. So if you look down at the bottom here, this is the urogenital sinus and I've drawn this in, in green down here. So with the gonad developing on either side, we can see there's a continuation which is kind of a ligamental structure here. So as the, the um, hormones and factors are starting to be secreted from the testes, certain things are going to change in this vicinity. So this ligamental structure in the male is going to develop into what we call the gubernaculum, which is going to actually start to pull the testes downwards towards the scrotum. Now, slightly lateral to that, we can see that blue structure, which is the same as this one here. So this is the mesonephritic duct, and we have these connections kind of continuing to the gonads. So this is going to be probably become the reti testes, which is important for the communication of the duct into the testes itself. Now, outside the mesonephritic duct is going to be the paramesonephritic duct, which is sometimes known as the malarian duct, whereas the blue one is sometimes known as the wolfian duct. So the, whole, the, the important factors that are playing a role here is firstly the Sertoli cells. The Sertoli cells are going to secrete an anti-malarian hormone or substance, which seems to start to degenerate the malarian system, so the black system. So that seems to degenerate that away. Now there is a, a cranial section that remains here and here, as well as a caudal section down here. Um, so these are important, which I'll, I'll go to a bit later. Whereas from the Leydig cells, which is going to be testosterone, this makes this um, mesonephritic duct or the Wolfram duct more dominant. Okay, so essentially um, the gonads are going to stay in place and start to get pulled down towards the scrotum whilst the mesonephric duct is going to become much more dominant and um, larger. So now we kind of move across to this image and what we can see here now in green, which is indicating this is the structures that come from it. So this urogenital sinus is going to develop all this big band of tissue here, which we're going to call the urethra. 
Okay, so the urethra are going to be the, the, the penile part of the urethra coming up into the, the prostate region. So the, the caudal part of the malarian duct that we saw, or the paramesonephritic duct, is going to be this last little remnants here, which is the prosthetic utricle. Becomes very important a bit later on, but that's going to have this center point here. Whereas, oh, and the final little cranial portion is here on top of the testes, which is going to be called the appendix of testes. So what you can see in here is the testes have now descended down, which they're going to be close to being in their scrotum at this point. But you can see the large blue ducts on either side, which is going to be that uh, mesoniferic duct or the Wolfian duct. Here we've got the um, reti testes, which are going to communicate across into the testes, which allow sperm to come into that area. And what we're going to see now is the epidermis coming up here for more defined ductus deferens, which it's going to come down and enter into the utricle. Now, segmenting off to the side, probably slightly cranial too, that um, ductus deferens is another gland, which becomes important on either side, which is the seminal vesicle. Okay, and then finally we have this whole structure starting to develop, which is going to be the prostate in this region here. So now finishing off in the adult form, what we can see here is we've done a sagittal cut. Okay, so we've kind of cut through, straight through here, and we've got the bladder on top like so, and on the outside you've got pretty much the whole prostate. Coming through the middle like so, is going to be the urethra. Now this part of the urethra probably comes from the upper portion of the urogenital sinus, whereas the lower part going down in the penis is the lower part of the urogenital sinus. Now what you can see out to the side here is the um, seminal vesicle and com coming along with it, so coming down here with it, is going to be the ductus deferens which is coming into here like so. So you've got the ductus deferens which is coming bringing sperm up as well as a separate tube coming from the seminal vesicle which is now coming down into the center portion or they, they call this black portion of um, which I'll draw in here this black portion of the prostate we call it that's the transitional part of the prostate and that's going to be very close to where the utricle is. Okay now if I if I come down to this image, so this is an actual frontal cut. So you're looking now in anteriorly. And here you can see the utricle here. So that was actually a derivative of that malarian system. So you can see the utricle here. This particular ductal system is actually coming from the prostate proper. Whereas these two blue dots here, one here, one here, is actually come from the ductus deferens and the seminal, which is going to be called the ejaculated duct. So that's going to be entering here and here. And then slightly below that, you've got the last ductal system, which is called the bulbal urethra glands, which are also secreting their contents into the urethra below the diaphragm. Okay. And that's really the main structures of it. So the prostatic um, secretions is going to give kind of an enzymatic secretion, which is important for keeping the sperm in fluid. The, the fluid coming from the seminal glands is going to be important for um, nutrition, so it's going to be like fructose. The rest of that's going to be the sperm coming from there. And then finally, the bulbar urethra gland secretions are going to, is going to lubricate it, but also um, probably decrease the acidity from your urine to allow the sperm to survive. Finally, just the different parts of the prostate. We can see here in red, that's kind of the fibromuscular portion, which actually comes from mesoderm and it comes in. Whereas pretty much the whole majority of the prostate is actually coming from the lower portion of the urogenital sinus. The only additional ones is that coming from the ductus deferens and the seminal vesicles, which are going to be mesonephritic ducts. And then finally in the center portion or the transitional portion, which is actually important because this is the part that gets bigger with um, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. That that region there is the utricle, which we saw there also, which actually comes from the malarian or the paranephritic system. So there you have it. That's how the prostate develops. We also saw a lot of just the genital urinary system developing there. But now, now hopefully you can see how the prostate first came about, how it alters with the, um, the change in differentiation, uh, and then finally how it appears and what derivative structures uh, in the adult.